Before we get into the main meat of this video, I was surprisingly not pressed that I missed a certain little few emotes. There are three dances in the main cities and the throw emote of Kurthus. These all do not have blue icons to note they unlock stuff. These are some of the very, very rare exceptions to the rule that everything has blue icons. I forgot to actually show these if I recall, and I'm surprised nobody corrected me. There is also this introduction quest for Chocobo Stabling over in Bent Branch Meadows. Further, before we get into things, you may consider grabbing your first Heavensward job quest. It won't unlock anything, and your main story quest guide will always be telling you about having one, but it's something to pick up. Some will go into Heavensward areas, others will not. So depending on which job you are, it may not be useful to start, and some, it will be useful. Also, a few days ago as of recording this, the new expansion was announced. Firstly, belts are going away. While I'll never outright mention belts in this video, they do come in the job gear coffers, and I did mention them in the last time. Those are no longer an issue. Secondly, there is a stat squish coming up that will affect all expansions. Theoretically, all of the comments in this video should still apply after the squish, but there's always doubts. So take any gear-based comments with a grain of salt by level 60, especially on the level 60 samurai quest a bit. But you still want to be gearing up to the best gear you can get per expansion, even after the stat squish. That I could say for certainty, but that's all for now. But now it's time. After cleaning up everything we wanted to get done in A Realm Reborn, we return to the Falling Snows. When we last left off, we had become fugitives. Our friends have gone missing, and the worst has come to pass. Things are dire. But a smile better suits a hero. There is much and more we can do now that we have arrived in Ishgard, including attune ourselves to the Aetherite, but also be sure to talk to any NPCs related to your current quest, especially your allies. They can often have funny dialogue, especially now that we're in the expansions. But take your time to explore at your leisure. We have a couple of unlocks available to us right now, and not every location in town will be gone to anytime soon, but the story will even outright suggest a tour and make visiting most locations an objective. So you may decide to wait until the story forces the tour on you. But extremely importantly among the new unlocks are the three Heaven's Word jobs. Machinist, yes that was on purpose, is over in the Sky Steel Manufactory of the Foundation. Dark Knight is in the northern section of the Pillars, and right below that, at the Athenaeum Astrologicum, is Astrologen. All three of these begin at level 30, and have a merchant around their quest locations with weapons to help you reach 50 and get into Heaven's Word content. But when you're done with your own personal guided tour, we'll reach the last vigil and the final Aetherite Shard, unlocking instant teleport into Kurthus Central Highlands. And this is the only Aetherite exit you have here, 
the other exits you have to walk to from within the town. It's weird, but it's how it works. But talking to Orchafont lets us in to see Count Fortomp, who himself suggests a tour of the city. This is why you might have waited to do a tour with the story. However, what I want to discuss here instead is the fact that this quest will reward us with a piece of high quality level 50 gear. It's weaker than any of my tome gear you could get, but using this, if you are missing some pieces, can fill in the gaps. From this point on, all quest gear rewarded will be of the high quality variety rather than the garbage that is no quality. Start keeping a closer eye on item level and high quality versus no quality at this point. And know that even if the first quest only has melee job items, the quests cycle who the rewards are targeted towards. The next quest may be for mages and then the ranged. And be sure to do as suggested by the quest and attune to the main Aetherite if you haven't. Seriously. Personally, I would even go as far as to make it your home point to make using return an option. But then it is time to return, huh, to our main journey of being an errand boy. We have two main story quest paths to get us acquainted to our new environs. Both must be completed to continue the story just like previously, so pick up both and do them in either order, but I'll be doing the Curthus line first. Back out near the main Aetherite, we can now access Leaves, both of the battle and non-battle types. They are segmented every two levels, so 50, 52, 54, etc. But we also have Temple Leaves, and they follow the same level pattern. These cost 10 leaves and are slightly longer versions of the exact same leaves. They are overall less rewarding, but take less time to do so. So if you are capped on leaves and aren't really using them, this will be the better option for both time and material sake. Moving back into a trip into Curthus, you'll notice the door is locked. This will remain locked for a very long time. It will open eventually and you could just walk out into Curthus, but until then we have to go downstairs to the Chocobo Keep to progress. If for whatever reason you leave the area without first using the Aetherite, or just don't want to use teleporting, this is how you must get back in until they unlock the door. To the hamlet of Falcon's Nest. Once abandoned, now freed of its pall of snow and ash, he came. Here in Falcon's Nest, you'll notice some easy to access training dummies if you need a refresher on your rotation or practice for your new job, and the realization you can no longer fly. Heavensward Flight will be something we get into later and go over a bunch of stuff for. Until then, continue the story, grab up all the free gear you can get, and get used to ground travel again. You'll be doing a lot of it. Something you may also quickly run into is the general danger of enemies. See how quickly I tear through these ice sprites for the main quest? Meanwhile, if I attempt to kill a single enemy of the overworld, it is much beefier than the story's enemy. The overworld is not messing around. Also keep in mind I am in the best gear I can wear and playing samurai which is not balanced for level 50 so it is way stronger than most jobs. For this and for other reasons, remember you have a chocobo companion to help you through combat. He is cute and wants nothing more than to be a good bird. Moving forward through the area, you like to realize just how huge the map is, and how much verticality has been added. Other maps have had some size and some verticality, but nothing like what is in these expansion maps. A common issue I see people have with this area specifically is the level 56 Dragoon quest. Notice this river. If we continue to follow it, 
it leads through an otherwise impenetrable cliff. This should prove how much more you need to start paying close attention to context clues and being aware of your surroundings. Many players lead themselves to believe that they need flight to do the Dragoon quest, but that is not at all the case. Though on that note, the level 58 Scholar quest is level 58. It assumes you have flight. There is no other way onto this boat, but because of it being level 58, that is why. On that same note, the map exits into zones the devs don't want you visiting yet tend to be locked in expansions. Not always, but don't try to use zone exits if it's a zone the story has not yet at least brought you to once before. The fact that the Curthers Western Highlands door isn't even open when you want to go there proves that idea pretty well. But anyway, let's talk about this area's solo duty. It's pretty simple, follow the footprints. But when you get attacked by a bunch of heretics, the last one will start to run away. If I tried harder, I could have potentially killed him far before he led me to my goal. And seemingly, some players actually do this as a question I saw a couple of times before was what to do in this quest, that they were lost. What to do seems pretty obvious, but if they were to kill the heretic before reaching the base, I can see the issue. So be careful on killing this heretic, let him lead you to the base, and then murder him dead. But that over, we can return to Ishgard to turn in the end of this pathway, and still can't walk out the door. Like I said, the entrance and exit is locked for a long time, either use teleports or chocobo keeps. But over to the Sea of Clouds half of the story, we have to talk to this specific NPC, and despite the many exit arrows, each one is a different door to a different part of the map. Even the NPC himself is a different exit. You always have a way back into an area if you don't use an Aetherite, and this guy specifically is the one for this section of the story, which just goes to show how much you need to learn the maps and pay attention to surroundings. A few notes for this area. You can see that this area is massive, but the entire northern 75% of the map is not available to us. Focus on this small southern section until much later. Secondly, aw, look at the kitty cat, he's so cute. Let's kill him. Thirdly, Paisa! One journey through the zone later and we'll meet the windfish. A wink and a nudge to the player that primals are still around, and we'll have to murder it later. With both sections done and over with, we can return to Four Tom's Manor for our first major story turn, and our first major reward. We have to go save Tataru and Alfie from the very obviously corrupt Heaven's Ward. Or at least Grino is obviously corrupt. Other dudes might just be along for the ride at this point. But for beating our faces in, absolving us of crime, ironic, we can now fly in heaven's word. Kinda. The fact that this black chocobo is given such a hullabaloo is because, back in the day, he used to be your very first flight mount. Not all mounts could fly like they can now, and even your personal chocobo had to have a specific side quest done just to get that to fly. And even this new black chocobo can't fly yet without some work. Use the whistle and then go into your key items to find the Aether Compass. Put this somewhere on your hotbars, out of the way but easy to access to use on the fly. In the travel menu is the Aether Currents tab, which is currently empty, but we'll be filling it in soon. For now, you may or may not be getting to level 52 if you grabbed a secondary job like me. Or due to Realm Reborn, you're already way ahead. But around this point is when I hit level 52. Jobs from a Realm Reborn and a Heaven's Word must do their job quests to get more skills. Jobs from after Heaven's Word, however, do not. So Samurai here 
automatically got its level 52 skill, but my Dragoon must go do job quests to get more. Remember though, keep on your job quests, including for Samurai and Red Mage because of something later. But one outfit change later, it's time to continue the story back in Curther's Western- God, the door still isn't- oh! Once we get into the area, there's a blue quest waiting for us. And the reward is one of the many Aether Currents we need. Accept the quest and then keep moving on. Keep using the compass as you go to get used to using it over and over, and find a green orb of Aether just sitting in the middle of the field. This is another Aether Current. Grab it, and then now we can see in the Aether Current menu, it has been populated. There are 10 currents we can find in each area with the Aether Compass, and 5 from specific quests in the area. Notably though, all of the Heaven's Word currents are placed in very easy to reach spots. Most of the currents are straight in the main path you follow with the story, though sometimes hidden in geometry or behind walls so the compass will still help. Otherwise, some of them are also near side quest objectives, the ones with Aether Currents as rewards, so you never have to explore too far just to earn your flight. But speaking of side quest currents, one of them from the Convictory is not just a current, but a dungeon as well. The only optional leveling dungeon of Heavensward, filling in the level 51 slot, is Dusk Vigil. It's a bit out of the way, but proves the point of there being currents near side areas. It is also at this point that you'll see it's four side quests and one main story quest for flight per area, with all five quests open now for Curthur's Western Highlands. But head on in, deal with the inhabitants, and get yourself a current. But the main story quest current. This quest ends the line of the Curthus Western Highland story, where the Chocobos roam takes us into the nearby Dravanian Forelands. Flight is only ever gained when you complete an area's main story, though it is still very highly recommended to grab flight as soon as it becomes available. The game is very loud about telling you it's been unlocked, and then you just gotta take off for the skies like normal. Just be careful where you land because much higher level enemies stalk the areas previously unreachable. And so establishes the main cycle of every area. Progress the main story and gather currents as you go, do any blue quests you see for currents too, but before we move on let me note that after finishing Dusk Vigil I was already level 54. This is due to the armory bonus but if you started the expansion without swapping jobs like I did, you'll already have an EXP buffer keeping you ahead of the curve, possible through the entire expansion. For reference, my Dragoon here is already level 58 before I started into Heavensward. I also have the Aetherite Earring from pre-ordering Shadowbringers. I will be using it going forward, just remember that if you fall behind in levels, you have the leveling roulette and new dungeons to farm. To a land where the soil slithers and the sky seethes with sinuous shapes, they came. But here in the Forelands, we'll see some other new unlocks. The first is right when we get into Tailfeather. This member of the Ironheart clan has an expansion to our sightseeing log. And this version is actually useful. It's a good little bit of EXP here and there, and 99% of expansion logs do not have time or weather requirements. Just find this glowing orb in the world and do emotes on them. Usually it's lookout, but this example was prey. And there's a lot of these around. And as you see, you don't need to have done the first log to do any of these only have it unlocked to get the expansion log. Now let's go over our level 53 unlocks. The first is all the way back in town, the clan hunt. Unlike allied hunts, these aren't absolute trash. 
These are daily hunts that are worth decent little bits of EXP and some nice Centurio seals, which can buy teleport tickets too. They're also normal enemies, all of them, that are always up. No need to wait for fates to spawn. And remember, the icon above their heads are a little Mandragora to denote that you have a hunt. Next up is the story required Dance to the Song of the Ringing Steel. You'll have more than one trial to deal with while leveling up, and they're no joke, at least when they were new. If people don't understand some of the mechanics still though, things could still go very deep south. Luckily, old content is easier than on launch, and the threat level is at least a little reduced, but they're still not just face rolls. Thirdly, soon after killing Ravana, we have our first Heavensward Beast Tribe available, and the arrow next to the quest name actually means something. It means it's a special sinking quest. This quest will sink to the level of whatever job you picked it up as, so if I'm picking it up as a level 54, the quest itself will sink to be level 54. This will go all the way from 50 up to the maximum of level 60. From this point forward, all Beast Tribe quests will do this, and then more quests beyond this will also start to sink to your level. This introductory quest does not require flight to get to, but progressing through this tribe, flight is highly recommended as some quests will involve flying. Further, the structure is a bit different. Rather than getting three quests per rank you have, you only get three quests per day, period, and three quests every time you rank up. But even if you are rank four, unlike a Realm Reborn tribes, this does not mean you have 12 quests in this one tribe. Especially since if you check your reputation window, you start at rank three. There's a reason for this, but it's otherwise not very important. It's just another battle job you may want to get working on for EXP or other rewards. Now it's time to move on to the next dungeon and our final quest for the Four Lands. This will unlock flight for the area if you have the rest of the currents. But note that the level is 53. This is the pattern every expansion so far as of Shadowbringers follows. Every odd level has a dungeon, with most of them being story required. Moving into the Churning Mists, once again, if you leave this area without first attuning, you can still walk back from the Halo in the Forelands. You can never get yourself stuck. There's always safety measures in place, but do use the Aetherite. Listen to Alfie. But importantly now is, some all's gear drops were item level 130. And now the main story... Level 54 gear is better than your current gear. I level 133 are barely stronger than ironworks, but they are stronger. So it's at this point, you'll want to start upgrading your gear as you go, especially as a tank. Every little bit helps, and every dungeon after this especially will have gear that improves more and more as you progress. Use every drop you can get. On another note, I want to mention the level 54 samurai job quest. This one seems to give people trouble, but hopefully the fact that the game evolved and old stuff becomes easier as we go, this is no longer going to be the case. Make full use of your toolkit and you should get through it fine, and be sure you have full I-130 gear at a minimum. And remember, A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Word jobs need to do their quests for more skills. Things are a bit more sparse from here on out in terms of unlocks. The next notable thing is all the way at level 56, the second level of daily hunts. These are worth even more than the first level just by nature of being higher level hunts. Useful bits of EXP, pick them up even if you don't intend to do them actively. You may run into the enemies by accident. And moving forward more, we have finally the northern half of the Sea of Clouds. There is a way back here once again, 
but also for the southern half we will need a revisit for a side quest and some Aether Currents. I took care of this after completing the northern section, which if you want to do the other beast tribe, you need flight to finish the unlock quest. The Vanu unlock objectives are all in areas you need to fly to, and the hub is even on its own segregated island. Get to work if you want to do the beast tribes. Moving ahead even more to level 58 in the story and finally reaching the Dravanian hinterlands. Up till now, both entrances have been completely locked to you, but now they are open. To the city of Shavia, that great seat of knowledge now abandoned by her keepers, they came. We have our journey to Edelshire, the real hub of Heaven's Word. There is a lot to this place for both battle and non-battle, but this video is obviously focused on battle. Firstly, we have rank 3 hunts as you come in. Don't bother turning this in until you make a normal trip back to Ishgard. But most important is in the main building. Welcome to Rowena's House of Splendors. This building, and all of Edelshire in general, used to be nothing but ruins in Patch 3.0. But thanks to Rowena, and the patches as they continued, this place was rebuilt. I recommend looking up what Edelshire used to be like in 3.0 just to compare how far this place has come. But with that in mind, let's talk to the vendors for a full suite of item level 270 gear for level 60. 270 is the absolute best you can get for the expansion, and there's weapons again too. Hope you stocked up on some extra poetics, because you will very, very much benefit from buying a couple of these items. Or a full set like I will be doing again, like I did with Ironworks. Be sure to attune to the Aetherite as well, and the mini Aetherite before leaving. And our next major point of note isn't until level 59, and the finale. Welcome to Azizla. Once again, Aetherite, and there is a way to get back if you left without the Aetherite. But extremely notable, there are no Aether Compass currents. All five are from the main story. This is the only area so far that flight is just outright given to you even in the other expansions. Because when we finally mount up on a nice cool dragon, we have no other way to get to the ship in the middle of the zone. If you're level 60, welcome to the finale of 3.0, Heaven's Word. But first, back in Ishgard, we have access to the Heaven's Word B rank hunts. Same as a Realm Reborn B ranks, and just as useful, but a bit harder to kill now that we have so much more gear. 100 seals, once a week, just uh, enjoy finding the enemies and how huge these maps are. Especially if you get Omni like I did. Azizla is huge. Even Samurai and Red Mage must go do their job quests now. Your level 60 skill, no matter what job, is locked to the quest. Further, due to the win these quests are releasing, item 130 is not enough. Even if you are item 150, you will struggle a lot for the samurai and red mage quests. Throwing a lot of poetics at a bunch of Shia gear to hit 189, this quest still wasn't free for me. You can still easily lose with this much gear. Be prepared for that realization and get your awesome final skill. Then the game will once again tell you, you cannot job quest until finishing the expansion of Heaven's Word with the quest, The Far Edge of Fate. Moving back into all other jobs meanwhile that aren't Red Mage and Samurai, your quest will additionally reward a coffer. I am item level 125 only for Dragoon because of my Aetherite earring and had no trouble with this quest. 
The balancing for jobs that were out during Heavensward is very different than what came after and much easier to be geared for. But again, complete the quest, get a skill, and you can't continue. But now open your coffer. Much like at level 50, you get a free set of level 60 gear at level 210. Not quite poetics level, but still really strong for what you had before. Samurai and Red Mage only do not get this because they came after in Stormblood. And you will also probably need all this new gear because the Aetherochemical Research Facility requires a minimum of I-142. If you didn't get a bunch of drops from Gubal, you probably won't have naturally hit this. Before going in though, we have one more unlock. Back in Idleshire, we have this adventure with keeping up with the Aliapos. Yes, Koji Fox did approve that name. But point is, this little spawn of Satan wants to hear your many tales of murder sprees. Wondrous Tales is a weekly book you have two weeks to complete. Inside are 16 objectives, which you may or may not have unlocked yet. Dungeons of specific level tiers, raids of 24 man, normal and savage variety, PvP. For a quick overview of how this goes, you want to do 9 of these objectives and try to get a bingo up to 3 bingos. Each completed objective will randomly place a sticker on the board, so just do whichever objectives you like of what you were given. Importantly though to getting a successful run is second chance points. Anytime you complete any duty with at least one new ally, you get a second chance point and can store up to nine of them at max. A retry allows you to reset any completed objective. So if I kill King Mog X and take the sticker, I can then use a retry point to retry King Mog and do it a second time. However, one random other duty will be chosen to be marked as complete in its stead. So I could retry Mog X and it will auto-complete Circus Tower and I can no longer do that for the board. There is also Shuffle. For two points, we shuffle the stickers that are already on the board. Use this only after you have seven stickers on the board. Aim for a shuffle to at least give you one bingo. Then get your eighth and ninth stickers, hoping to get a second line. Three lines is super hard to get even with the perfect setup. Your luck must be really on your side. It's also some pretty good EXP. I'd say it's worth it to keep up on this even just for the EXP, but all the other rewards are great too. But alright. Either way, it is time to end this. It's time to assault the Aetherochemical Research Facility and end this war for good. It's time. Uh oh. We beat the game again! Well, n not really. Just like A Realm Reborn, Heaven's Word is far from over. We have won and lost much, but the work never ends. Things haven't really improved all that much, but a smile still better suits the hero. Thank you for watching the first episode of Heavensward Edition of Final Fantasy XIV, Your First Day. We got through a lot, but there's so much more to go. We got five patches of content to get through, and there's a ton of it. But there's also a ton to do on the gatherer and crafter end. So we're going to take a little bit of break from dealing with all the issues of Ishgard to take some time to relax and craft and build and all that stuff. There's some very, very important things in there that you will like if you are a crafter or a gatherer, so stay tuned, and you might learn a few things as well. But take care, 
and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And thank you to all of my patrons. But an extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Nalfi, and Valor LLC. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down in the description. And if you would like to join in the public discord, that is down there as well. Thank you for watching.